We welcome you today to our video Bites of Bread here at St. John Lutheran Church in the town of Center. If you watch the news lately, there has been this biblical revival, the Holy Spirit filling these people, that such a great amount of people are coming that it actually made the national news. And maybe you've, you've heard about it, that little college in the little town of Asbury, Kentucky, which is a Christian college, but, but what are we supposed to think about it? And I've had people say, Pastor, are, are we for that? Are we against it? Is it bad? Is it good? Is it right? Is it wrong? And I thought maybe that was a very important thing to talk about because it uses biblical terms, talks about the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, talks about words such as revival and, and things like that. And those are words that maybe we're a little uncomfortable with. So I thought let's spend a few minutes talking about how does this fit into the life of a Christian and, and especially our life. The words I'm going to use today is, is maybe an odd way to, to address it, but it was the parable that Jesus told about sowing the seed. And that's the word of God. Take that seed and spread it onto the world. And some of that seed would fall on good soil and some would fall amongst the weeds. But as we see today, some fell on what we'd call rocky ground. It says here, the seed that was sown on rocky ground is the person who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he is not deeply rooted and does not endure. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. That's found in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13. And you can read that whole parable to see the different ways that people uh, respond to the word of God working in their hearts. And I think that's the key to our discussion here. Is that revival, that, that gathering in Asbury, Kentucky, and now it's spread to many other places around our country, is it bad? In and of itself, it maybe isn't bad, but it is maybe misplaced zeal. Because what you're noticing with this is very often there's a lack of hearing that they were studying the word of God or giving God's word the, the power. All the power is coming from the Holy Spirit who just fills you or just moves you. And if you are holy enough, you, you leave the place as a new person. But that misses the point because how does that happen? How does that changing of hearts happen? It doesn't happen because we are moved. It doesn't happen because we are filled. And, and that's my one caution as we hear these different type of revival things. What, what brought this revival on? Well, this one was because people were led by social media to see these wonderful things were happening. And, and they were moved by the music. I heard over and over, the Holy Spirit moved me as the music filled my heart. And then it talked about there was lots of repentance there because the Holy Spirit was there. Except it missed the point because it never once, in all the things that I heard or read, said, God's law crushed my heart, and the Holy Spirit using that law led me to see my sin. You never once heard that the Holy Spirit came through the word of God and said, we are sinners who only by God's grace are saved. It only said the Holy Spirit moved me. These movements come out of something that happened during the 1800s, and that was the time period where there were many revivals around our country. Uh, the Methodists and, and other people like that, those religions, Lutheran groups, gathered because of this revivalism. They thought Christians needed to act more like Christians so the Holy Spirit would fill them more, this holiness movement. And it is great and it is right that we should live as holy people. That That's correct. That's what the Ten Commandments say. And yet that misses the point because living by the Ten Commandments does not move the Holy Spirit to come on us in greater form. In fact, quite the opposite. The Holy Spirit is probably further away from us when we try to live as Christians because we are not perfect. The wages of sin is death and all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It is like that seed then. And, and what happens to those people who gathered for those revivals? What happens to that person who makes that decision to believe in Jesus because they were so moved by the music and by the people. They made their altar call and they stood and prayed and God did wonderful things in their life. What, what, what is that? It's like I just read before. It's like the seed that is sown on the rocky ground. When they hear it, they receive it with joy. And that's exactly what happened. People flooded to that town of Asbury. And they were filled with joy. And they said, I am moved. The Holy Spirit is in me and I'm a new person. But without the word of God, the second part is key. Yet that person is not deeply rooted and does not endure. And when trouble and persecution come, they immediately fall away. If we are not rooted in God's word, then we miss the point because that's how the Holy Spirit works. 
says faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Faith comes when the word is connected to, to the Holy Spirit, and that's true. That part we would say is true, and in baptism, the Holy Spirit worked. And what does he do? He doesn't fill us with power, he fills us with faith. And faith isn't something I go get because I am so holy or so moved or so emotional. Faith is something God gives because the Holy Spirit led me to see I'm a sinner. And that Jesus and God's way of salvation is the only way to heaven. And so your baptism, that's when the Holy Spirit filled you. When you hear the word of God, that's the Holy Spirit strengthening you as he leads you to see sin and grace. When you come to Lord's Supper, that's the Holy Spirit filling you. And you, you don't have to have some emotional movement. In fact, faith is not an emotion. Faith is just the receiving hand that says God is the true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And on the cross of Calvary, he won the victory. And the Holy Spirit is with me every time I open and use those wonderful means of grace, the gospel and word and sacrament. You don't need an emotional movement for the Holy Spirit to come. In fact, the Holy Spirit often is just like that wind. We don't even know it's there. And, and the word is bread. And guess what? The Holy Spirit works. In that water with the word of baptism, the Holy Spirit's there. And it's not some powerful movement. It's God working, even the heart of an infant, faith. And in that Lord's Supper, you kneel side by side and receive a little piece of bread and a little bit of wine. But together with the word of God, the Holy Spirit comes and offers to you forgiveness and strength. So what do I think about those spiritual renewals? I think they're shallow. I think they're based on emotion. They're leading people maybe to see Jesus. And for that, I can see a good purpose. But unless they base themselves on the foundation of Christ, the Holy Spirit really means nothing. Because that's where the Holy Spirit works, through the Word of God, built on Jesus. Not on us, not on our holiness, not on our feelings, but on the sure fact that Jesus on the cross paid for our sins and rose on the third day so we have eternal life. So rather than running off to the nearest rally, open your Bible. Rather than running off to the nearest place to find the Holy Spirit filling me, remember your baptism. Rather than wondering what I need to do to find the Holy Spirit, come to Lord's Supper, come to worship, because there is the Holy Spirit working silently yet powerfully through his word and through the sacraments. What a blessing. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be our helper, counselor, to lead us to see your way of salvation as he worked faith in our hearts. He gave us that gift of faith and he strengthens that faith every day through your word and through the sacraments of baptism and Lord's Supper. Lead us off into those wonderful tools to see Jesus, to see the Holy Spirit, to see the Father, and to be strengthened for each day of our life. We thank you for those tools and for that assurance. Amen. God's blessings as you are filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with forgiveness, filled with strength. God's blessings.